Some of the common gastrointestinal problems we see in children with RTS are reflux, are feeding disorders, and constipation. And then of course we have the other conditions that are seen in other neurotypical kids as well that we shouldn't forget. She was just a, a very happy, sweet baby. She had some digestive problems, but she would really try to just work around everything that she had wrong with her. She did have an issue with swallowing. Feeding disorders are pretty common in children with RTS, especially in younger age group when they're newborns and within in the first couple of years. And that's primarily because of hypotonia. The upper GI tract, the upper part of the esophagus, the pharynx, and the back of the throat are all skeletal muscles. So that part is affected as well. She could projectile vomit whatever she just drank about four feet across the room. If the vomiting is bilious or green, that adds another layer of seriousness to the situation. And those are typically seen in kids that have malrotated intestines or obstructed intestines and they need more urgent medical care. And then we felt really bad for her too because sometimes she would aspirate, but thank goodness somehow she avoided having any major issues. When you swallow the secretions in the food, they instead of going down into the esophagus and swallowing tube, they tend to leak into the airways and that's called aspiration. When these kids have aspiration, that's a kind of serious complication of children that have feeding disorders and that should be really picked up early if it's occurring. He's definitely got an oral aversion. He had some bad reflux as an infant and all that and he just, he could live off of Pediasure and he does. <laughs> so When the feeding disorder is pretty severe and they tend to start losing weight and are not able to sustain themselves or their weight uh, with what they're taking by mouth, that's the time that they should be referred to a gastroenterologist for consideration for a G-tube or feeding tube. Over time, we tend to see that oral motor skills and the hypotonia gets a little better as the kids get older and they start to take food by mouth as well and are able to start to sustain their weights just by eating by mouth. So we gradually decrease their formula or food that we are giving through the G-tube and eventually get the G-tube out. She had feeding issues, so they put a G-tube in. She's had a lot of issues with constipation, so we worked with him on that. Constipation typically starts during their infancy and early childhood and continues through their adulthood. Early detection is what I'd like to stress and adequate treatment. There are two primary types of laxatives. One are osmotic laxatives that cause the stools to be softer and retain fluid and the other are stimulant laxatives that actually cause contractions of the rectum and the colon and oftentimes we have to use adequate doses of both of those types of laxatives to result in a stool or a bowel movement every day. So gastroesophageal reflux is pretty common in kids with RTS and again it has to do with hypotonia. A lot of the kids with RTS have a low tone of the lower esophageal sphincter which allows the stomach contents to come up into the esophagus. If it seems like it's bothering them then you can try some acid suppressant medications. You can try H2 blockers like ranitidine or you could try proton pump inhibitors. The first time they scoped him he definitely had a lot of eosinophils but once we put on reflux medicine it resolved so he doesn't actually have EOE, they call it. They often need repeated scoping to see whether or not the eosinophilic esophagitis is under control or not. So as far as follow-up visits for patients with RTS is concerned, it really depends on what condition they are being followed for by the GI specialist and how severe the condition is. Once they are in a stable condition, then they can be seen once every six months to every year. But if the problem is really not completely resolved and the, and the physicians are still trying to get the right management for that problem, then you may need to see the gastroenterologist or the specialist much more frequently. The last probably six or seven years, you really, it's only mainly just checkups. So we've been very fortunate. Yeah.